Hey guys, I'm going to break it down for you how I would if you were in my classroom, the elements of art, okay? So I'm going through the test, the art pretest, and one of the first questions that was asked that a lot of you got wrong was something derived from reflected light. I remember talking about this last, um, last year with you guys. If we turn out the lights and it's absolute darkness, what happens? You can't see anything, right? So not only can you not see anything, but everything loses its color, right? With the light on, you can see that I have a tapestry on my wall. I have a green shirt. My hair is, I don't even know what color, white painted fingernails, blue eyes. If I turn the lights off, all of that disappears. So something derived from reflected light is color. Color only shows up when there's light. Think of it like a rainbow when the sun shines through the clouds or the rain, right? The, the way that the sky is. Um, I don't know. I don't teach weather stuff, but something about the rainbow refracts the light from the sun and it bends it just enough so that there's a rainbow coming through. These prisms, I have these prisms here. I have them hanging. Where are they? There's too much. Sorry. These show, these make rainbows too. So I have them hanging in my um, bedroom and my classroom. I have them hanging everywhere. Um, but if the light shines through here, it would, if it was shining at the right angle, it would make a rainbow on my face or my wall or whatever. So that's what color is. A line is a dot that goes for a walk. So if I took my pencil, my pen, and I put it here, right? I make a dot, Let's see if I can hold it. And then the dot gets crazy, right? The dot just starts at wilding out and it just goes on a walk. That's an example of line. It doesn't have to be a drawing that makes sense to be an example of line. Anytime pen or pencil or charcoal or paintbrush or anything touches paper and moves, that's a line, okay? Shape is like, think of it like a cookie cutter. You have a star-shaped cookie cutter and you cut out your cookie. It's gonna be a little 3D because it's a cookie, but if you put it on paper, on one sheet of paper, it would not be 3D, right? That would just be a shape. So like a sticker or a piece of paper that you cut into the shape of a heart, anything that's flat and just the shape by itself, the shape of whatever, a shape of a flower, shape of a circle, shape of a square, rectangle, triangle, person, whatever, is just shape. If you make it 3D, so if you make take your cookie cutter and you cut it out of, cut biscuits out of it, and you have this big old, you know, warm, fluffy biscuit shaped like a heart, then you'd have a 3D heart. Does that make sense? So it's, that would be called form. 3D shapes are form. 2D shapes are just shapes. So if you can cut it out of paper, it's a shape. If you cut it out of biscuit, it's a form. Or if you build it out of clay and it's, it's up, stands up and you can uh, like hold it in your hand and it comes up from your hand. That's 3D and that's form. Um, value sort of goes with color. It's the value scale. We talk about that in my classes. So if you haven't had me before, then you wouldn't know this, but my students that have, we talk about that when we do um, still lifes because all you can use is a pencil or charcoal. So the value scale is from darkest to lightest. So the example of the the row of color of gray, right? Dark gray, light, medium gray, all the way to white. That is an example of the value scale. You can get, you can make your own by using a pencil and scribbling as dark as you can, and then a little lighter, little lighter, little lighter, little lighter, da, 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 da. a little bit lighter all the way down until there's nothing in that last piece. Um, you could do that also with paint by mixing white or black 
you can get darker red or lighter red, darker red if you mix black, lighter red if you mix white. That's the value. Um, texture is how something looks like it feels. So if you draw, it's not, it wouldn't be me just giving you a fresh, uh, warm cookie out of the oven, right? That's not texture. It would be me drawing a cookie with all, with the chocolate chips and the, the bumps that are in it and all the, all the details that make it look like a cookie. Uh, that would be texture. There would be an example of me drawing texture. That's not the actual thing, but it's, it's how it looks like the actual thing would feel. The, we did form. So the last thing is space. Sometimes this gets really confusing. It is not actual space, like outer space. That's not it. It's what's drawn or painted or photographed or in whatever art form you use. It's the thing in front, the thing in the back, and the thing in the middle. So if there's not something in the front, say, or in the back, it still can be an example of space because it makes you, the viewer, think something is closer to you and something is farther away from you in whatever artwork you're looking at. So for an example, in, right now, what you're seeing right now, I'm in the foreground. That's what it would be called because I'm the closest thing to you, to what the viewer can see. My wall back there is in the background because that's the farthest thing away from what you can see. And my lamp right there would be in the, in the middle ground because it's not all the way back, but it's not all the way here. That's space. So if you took a screenshot of me right now and then drew this, that image, you would be representing space in the way that you draw it. That's also can be connected to perspective because I am closer to you. So I'm bigger. I look bigger than this room right now, right? Like Alice in Wonderland because my head touches the ceiling and my shoulders are almost as tall as my closet, but that's perspective. That's a fun way for artists to sort of trick the eye because you can draw something bigger in the front than what's drawn in the background. And that creates uh, the illusion of space in art. So I hope that makes sense. That's just the art elements part of this uh, test redo. We'll do uh, some more in a week.